couple of other items which appear on the income statement. One is discontinued operations. What do you mean by discontinued operations? As the name suggests, it's a discontinued operation. Now, suppose, suppose you have a company which has, let us say, uh, five branches. Okay, each of these branches, five branches. Each of these branches maybe have two units. Each of these branches have two units. Right? Now, let us say. One of these units is going to be discontinued, is going to be discontinued. If this happens, then whatever income we get from this discontinued operation during the year has to be separately disclosed, has to be separately disclosed. What happens? Let us say, let us say a uh, 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 year beginning from January to December. Right. Let us say this unit works for January, February and March. Three years it worked. It was in operation. Then it was closed, discontinued. It is quite possible April, May, June, July, maybe in August, maybe in August it was also sold. It was also sold. It's possible. So now what happens? We may get, we may have got some revenue from this three months. So the revenue which is received, the income which we get from an operation which was then discontinued during the year, that income must be disclosed separately. If it was also, this, this was discontinued and we also disposed it of, any income or loss, any income or loss, gain or loss, whichever it is, must also be disclosed separately. So, what is discontinued operations? When a part of the business is discontinued, therefore there will be no cash flows from this in future. So, what happens is anybody looking at the income statement knows. Suppose we have got a particular income, let us say from these three months of 100,000 what it probably indicates, it could indicate is that in a year we get an income of 400,000 every quarter maybe. We totally in a year 400,000 which now next year we will not get. There will be no such cash flow, no such income from the next year. So this kind of information is very separately disclosed, is so transparent. So users of the financial statement get relevant information, get useful information. So the business in which a business which is discontinued or it is going to be discontinued or the company will not have any further involvement, it was whatever was within the control of the uh, company is no, is not so in future. This should be shown. The incomes and losses from this entity, this part of the operation should be shown separately. And of course, these are shown net of tax. These are shown net of tax. Let us see <coughs> how it is presented. After tax net income from continuing operations. This we've already done, right? We got net income. What is this? This net income, this we had already got. If that is the net income, after tax net income from continuing operations, then we find out the gain or loss from discontinued operations and disclose it separately. Mind you, this continuing operations is relevant, is relevant only if there are discontinuing operations. If there are no discontinuing operations, we don't make a separate statement about continuing operations. As we said, this kind of gain or loss consists of two parts. One is the gain or loss as it was running for that particular period and the other is the gain or loss from its disposal as it was running and from its disposal. Both of course is net of tax. Both net of tax. Another item is extraordinary item. So you know discontinued operations. When any operation, any significant unit of a business, of an entity is being closed down, we disclose separately the income earned from that 
<coughs> unit while it was in operation and if there has been any income or loss on its disposal. Now another new item is extraordinary, extraordinary, out of the ordinary items. What do they say? Material items. What is material? Material items are significant items. What does material mean? Significant items. So what do you mean by significant? It is, it is significant or big enough to influence the decisions of the users of the financial statements. That is significant. In fact, we have another concept called a materiality concept which says that only material, while certain rules, guidelines, standards, etc. are there, we follow a materiality concept saying that if some item is very small and it does not warrant following the rules or principle we can principles then we may not do the same and that is on the principle of materiality in the sense that it is not significant enough it does not really make uh, make it will not affect any decision of any of the users of the financial statements in such a case some rules may be ignored <coughs> We will discuss this in detail later. But here extraordinary items are material items that is large items, significant items, significant in, significant in value. Value. Unusual in nature. It is not a regular feature. Unusual in nature. Infrequent in occurrence. It does not happen month after month or year after year. Unusual and in infrequent. So extraordinary items are unusual, infrequent items. Of course they must be material. If there is something unusual has happened and the value is really very negligible, this is it would not be called an extraordinary item. What are these items? Maybe an example just for you to understand. Loss by fire, flood. Suddenly there is a government regulation which is significantly going to affect our revenues. Those are extraordinary items and each extraordinary item is to be shown separately. So besides we already did the net income, now we have done two more items, discontinued operations and extraordinary items to be shown on the face of the income statement. <coughs> Take a look at this. We have already done this income statement. You did all this, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating income, then other expenses were all deducted. We got income from, income before taxes, income taxes and here we have income from continuing operations. We call this net income before. We are calling this continuing operations because, because, because there is a discontinued operations. That's right, because there is a discontinued operations here. Whatever value of discontinued operations, it may be plus or minus, then you have plus or minus extraordinary items and therefore you now get the net income. This is how it is presented in the entire income statement. This discontinued operations value comes from here. What does this schedule say? Maybe loss on operations of division Y. Let's say division Y was closed up. Loss. Tax benefit on such loss, if you are making a loss, mind you, here, here we have already got this income. This income did not include this loss. When we bring in this loss, this income will come down. Therefore, the amount of taxes will also come down. That is why loss less the benefit, tax benefit of such loss. Similarly, this is a gain. The taxes on such gain is deducted and the net amounts, net of tax is totaled and then taken to the income statement and then taken to the income statement. <coughs> so this actually, I should not show it like this. From here, this is the schedule. From here, it comes to the income statement. Clear? Let us just see how everything is presented. If we have confused so many things. What is operating income? Do you remember what is operating income? Operating income is income from the core activities of the business. Operating income the, from the core activities of the business does not include interest income, no interest expense, day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day -day activities of the 
business. That gives you the operating income. What is income from continuing operations? From this operating income, right? You have this operating income, then you add interest income, deduct interest expense, make adjustments for any other non operating items, deduct the income tax. What you get would be income from continuing operations. Clear? First, you got operating income. Do you remember? Sales, less cost of goods sold, you got a gross profit and all the business expenses, you get operating income. It does not have the interest income or interest expense. From that, from this income, operating income, you deduct the interest income, you deduct the interest expense, add the interest income, any other non-operating items, adjust income tax and what you get is income from continuing operations. I repeat, this term from continuing operations is used only if you have discontinued operations assuming you have <clears throat> assuming you have what do you get next income from continuing operations what is this this <clears throat> sorry uh, uh, what is net income what is net income income from continuing operations this is the income from continuing operations. What do you have to adjust? Plus minus discontinued operations. Plus minus extraordinary items. Extraordinary items you just disclosed separately. And therefore we get the net income. This is the overall format. Let's just look at the income statement once more for revision. Is this good students? You remember sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit. Less your expenses of running the business. So you get operating income. All other revenues, gains, interest, expense. So that you have income before taxes. Deduct the taxes and you get income from continuing operations. Which is used only if there are discontinued operations. Adjust the discontinued operations. Adjust extraordinary items. And you get net income. And you get net income. A small revision of the format.